Um, in Britain, we've got a, a history going back 3,600 years. What we're trying to do is to discover and uncover why all this has been sort of cast aside and, and neglected. Uh, what has happened is the most titanic event ever happened in Britain. A comet wrecked Britain in the year 562. It's been generally poo-pooed and disregarded because the Church of Rome ran Europe, as it were, and said, no stone could fall from heaven on earth. And a shower of meteorites fell in France in about 1803, and they finally had to admit stones do fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing happened in Bolivia. All the pyramids, the temples, the churches, the houses, the cities, towns were wrecked by a comet. 562. Same year as Britain, so this thing is clearly, if you draw any, a line on a map, go right across. What, what ensued is that the population that survived fled to Ireland, over to Brittany and elsewhere, and for seven to eleven years, large parts of Britain were uninhabitable. No animals. You go into these zones and you were dead. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of a series of domino events that, that led to a a complete chain because immigrants started to come into the empty devastated areas you see and there's nothing to oppose them. angles re record in their histories how the lands were devastated and scattered groups of bewildered people were about yeah see uh brooks in scotland they're, they're large huge towers uh, in scotland monument massive things like castles circular uh, walls are so thick that you can go up uh, you know little tunnels to go to the top in the walls mm -hmm. other hill forts and all the stones are fused together. In other words, they've melted together. Mm -hmm. So the surface of each stone is, when it touches the other, has become like part of each other. And they now know that the stones at the top have a deeper uh, air depth of melting. Right. And as you go down, there's less and less depth of melting of the surface of the stone. Right. So the heat has come from above. Right. Now, a comet traveling at, what, 13,000 miles an hour or say, whatever, zoom, whizzing over, uh, heat generated several thousand degrees mm -hmm. centigrade, it whoosh, it would melt stuff, but it wouldn't, they wouldn't have time to crack. Right. What it appears to have done is shifted the Earth poles by one degree. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor Charles Hap Hapgood, a famous man in America with his team, has shown that the North Pole, once it was south of Greenland, it was near Iceland, it was in Hudson's Bay, it was in Minnesota. The North Pole has wandered around everywhere, right. which would account for ice ages. Mm -hmm. The ice didn't come down from, from above and cover the earth. The pole was in a different place. So right. when it's south of Iceland, it's over Europe and Britain. The Conway Estuary, land went underwater. The uh, Cardigan Bay, large areas, the Lost Country right. went underwater. Uh, in the south east Wales, the most important to us historically, uh, the whole of the Orchard Ledge, Avalach Ledge, Avalon, mm -hmm. uh, went underwater and a huge harbour there, a massive stone harbour which exists in the mud now, right. went underwater. Also in Pool in Dorset, there's right. a submerged harbour. What has happened, when the earth shifts by one degree, the water doesn't lie over the oceans, it doesn't lie evenly. It lies in less of it, less height of water at the poles and more because of centrifugal force at the equator. Yeah. So a shift of one degree could, in the med, raise water levels mm -hmm. by 80, 90 feet, 100 right. feet. That's why Alexandria and Caesarea and these great cities is now 90 feet underwater. Right. John of Asia says how these various Greek and other cities right. were submerged.